Hi, Aileen. Welcome in. Hi, Kiyomari. Welcome in. It's been a hot minute since we've seen you. I hope we're doing well. Hi, Kim. Welcome in. You had some yo's? Hi, guys. Why'd I get a notey for the other channel? Because I accidentally went live on the main channel. I accidentally went live on the main. I forgot to switch an OBS. Okay. I forgot to set up shipping profiles for the Lionel Prince, so if you want to order, wait like two minutes. Wait like two minutes. I don't want a mistake like last time. Save. Okay, now we're good. Shaping profiles are set up. <laughs> I've been doing good. Glad to hear. Just trying to steal your thunder by streaming at the same time. You know what? I'll be honest. I lied. I did that on purpose. That way you guys would get two notifications. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It actually was a mistake. <laughs> I was like, why Why do I have, like, no chat? I was like, what's going on? Guys, go like the tweet I just retweeted and make sure you're following my our Twitter smile. Type 1 if you have your suits on, guys. It's a serious stream. Also, you know what's wild? My suit actually kind of fits. I'm in my pajamas. Well, get your suit on. Go grab it. How many of you are at work? You know, you, some of you guys might actually be in suits. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, well, wait like uh, two more minutes. My birthday suit? I'm deleting that one. You can't put like a PSI 2 bride and like expect it to be fine. Also, how is that not a blog term? <laughs> Like, what? Twitch tab. Wait, Kim, are you still in chat? I posted on my Instagram story. But on your India Ink illustration I drew for you on stream, I accidentally drew an Inktober drawing on it. Like, on the back. I'll still mail it to you, but I'll, I'll be very sad. <laughs> I'm clueless. Also, I should post that. I have new prints available too. Do, 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 do. Oh, these look so clean. Available. I'm almost done posting. I went to work. Mac woke me up for this. Wait, you did go to work today? Shit. I mean, shoot. I should not swear during a business stream. Mac's doing God's work? I mean, you don't want to miss the shareholder stream, right, guys? You don't want to miss this. This only happens four times a year. Also, I should get some socks on, huh? Okay, I'm almost done posting. Peace and light, people cried.
I was like, you know, Wild War live on the art channel. You have one more post and then I'm ready. Type two if you are excited for shareholders meeting. Type one if you're a hate watcher. Let's see who's paying attention, huh? Peace in. Both? No. No. Okay, I'm going to get some socks on. And I got my shoes on. Okay. No stalling. I'm already late. Okay, three, two, one. And you know what? There was actually a face cam today. No PNG tuber. You guys are eating good today. No, I'm nervous now. Well, why did it glitch like that? <laughs> oh, I know why. Okay. Hello? Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Today is the first quarterly shareholders meeting. Welcome in, everybody. Get your suits on. Get your briefcases ready. Get your notepads out, too. Because please make sure. To <laughs> I can't. I can't. Dude, I'm like. I'm like looking at myself. Wait. Okay, it's this hand up. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, I need to be really careful. Wait, why am I lagging? Oh no! I forgot my fans! Hold! Oh no, my fans! I forgot! Balance mode enable! Oh my god! Turn on! There we go. <clears throat> my computer's literally at 100 degrees. Man, you know, she's smoking. Okay, we should be good now. I always forget to change my fan settings. Anyway, hi guys. We are live from Peace and Art HQ, located in Washington. This is my totally real. Look, I can look, I can grab the chair. That's right here. Wait, imagine I had a chair prop. Dude, that would have been a good bit. <laughs> I saw a tip for conducting fast and effective meetings in the workplace. We should all be doing a plank. Okay, if I did that, it would be like off screen. So, you know what? I'll do a plank. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing it. Okay. I did my plank. That looks wrong. Shit. There's no peace on command here. You guys just have to behave. You have to behave here. Okay. So, the plan is simple. Guys, first off, First off, we have new artwork available on peaceandart.myshopify.com. Somebody please type exclamation, exclamation point shop. We have new lino prints. Now let's get a closer look. So this collection is under the shop page and then also under the lino print section. So this series is a ser Oh, the color correction is going to be wrong on camera. Um, I can't believe he rented out a room at the library for this. No, I've debated doing that. They only charge like 20 bucks an hour. You know, fuck it. We'll stream for the library. But then I would, I would like, it, I would dox myself. So I would never do that. Unless like, a, unless I did it in like a different city. But anyway, new Lionel Prince. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I forgot. Okay, just to clarify, this is not a green screen. So you may be wondering why you don't see the green in the cars. That is not why. We are in, oh shit. We're in an office space, but new, okay. new lino prints. You can see the actual colors here. I got decent scans this time. But yeah, so this, should I? Okay, guys, I'm ruining the immersion. Look at that. <laughs> so 
This is a Lionel Block stamp series inspired by the orchards that are throughout Washington State. Now, Washington State is a massive producer for orchard fruits. I don't know why. Maybe because we're just wicked and eastern Washington is massive. You drive through eastern Washington, you see so many trees. Literally, everybody has an orchard. So, this collection has cherries, which my parents did have a cherry tree in their backyard. Apple. Orangey, orangey, and pears. So this little print series is slightly different from the first one in a few ways. I'm back in the meeting room. I'm back here, live from an office. So this one uses brown ink instead of black ink because I like the look of brown versus a black outline. Huge inspiration, the Fruits Basket Remake Anime. They used brown outlines, and it was pretty. And there is slightly more shading slash color differentiation in this series. That is a critique I got for the last one. And you know what? I listened. So there's, it's still colored in with dye ink marker, Tombos and Cali Arts. But, um, there's a bit more color variation. The reason why I didn't do color pencil is because I tested out different materials for hollows, and it is still true. For these Lionel prints, you can buy the whole set, which is four for I think 40, 40, or $44, both the line art and the color versions. And then if you buy the singles, there is still a 10% chance of getting a hollow. And talking about hollows, for everybody who places an order today, only until 12 a.m. PT, you get a free holographic card. And I don't have any to demo or show because, um, I got better at the applying the hollow technique because I noticed when I was doing test runs last time, some of the color smeared. So I have to do the hollow in batches. So like I do like the inner details and then I do another batch. So it takes like three days to make a hollow in terms of like three sessions of applying the varnish. So they're drying. I don't want to fucking touch them because they take so fucking long. Wait, I'm swearing. It's a Gerald's meeting. Anyway. So. That is why I don't have any hollows to demo today. But I was going to do color pencil coloring for the series. But I tested it out and it looked like shit. Because since color pencil is wax, it kind of resisted the varnish a bit. It didn't resist it completely, but it created like a, a boatload more bubbles. So that's why for Lionel prints, if there's going to be varnish and hollow versions, it'll have to be colored in with dye ink. I'm sorry, I can't do hyperrealism. Maybe one day we'll get to workshopping. Guys, can we get some investors? Okay, so that is that is the new artwork available today on peaceandart.myshopify.com. Guys, click the link in the description and buy now. You can use code TWITCH10 or YouTube10 if you're watching this on YouTube for $10 off. Ain't no way. One time per person per use. Thank you. Okay, so this may or not may fuck this may or may not become an edit. We'll see. We'll see how busy I am. Okay, <sighs> man, I'm dude. I'm so fucking nervous. This is this isn't like a huge deal, but like I'm so nervous. Okay, I'm also sweaty. Wait, I'm I'm in front of a meeting board. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, why is the chat still okay? Okay, now we're ready. Okay. Today is October 4th, 2024, and it is the first quarterly shareholders meeting. Now, I own an SSP, not an LLC, mainly because the licenses were cheaper to buy. And also, it's just me. I do everything by myself. If you cannot tell, because some things don't look as polished but you know that's fine i got a really good green screen look at this so today we'll be going over the future plans for the piece in our company and maybe talking about future products and content plans as well and also going over the results of the consumer survey so from this point on every quarter at the end of every quarter and near the beginning of the following we'll do a shareholders meeting just to like catch up and see how we're doing on the business maybe i'll show some analytics We'll show how much I'm in the hole every month, you know? We'll go from there. Because, you know, I think a level of transparency is important. And, you know, supporting an independent artist is a...
tough decision. Because, you know, don't have a lot of influence. It's not like the resale value. Cough, cough, don't be a scab is very high. But, you know, some transparency is good. I'm obviously not going to talk about too much detail about certain things. You know, you guys don't need to know exactly how much money I make. But I want to share what I can. Because I understand that I do have a few other fellow artists in my... I almost said community in my audience. <laughs> and I think it'd be good to, like, learn from each other. We could say, you know, corporate speak, shake hands. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into the quarter four 2024 shareholders meeting. Ain't no way we got a follower? What? Donation? What? Oh, wait. You know what? Hi, Emerald. Just for you. Zero minute follow chat. Guys, behave. Behave today. Hi, Emerald. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how I kind of want today to go. If you're watching live, obviously this is going to be a different experience than if you're watching like a highlight video. So, everybody watching live, you're going to pretend that you're actually an investor. So if you could... Today's going to be a lot of yapping, okay? Just me talking. You guys can put your input throughout. Um, and also, like, if you like something, put, like, a happy emote. If you don't like something, put, a like, a sad or mad emote. You know, just for, like, a little bit of engagement. And that way I can get some, like, live feedback as well. Okay? Okay. Um, oh, also, even though I am an SSP, I'm the sole owner of Peace and Art. There is no other shareholders. The reason why I did do an SSP is because it's better for tax reasons if you're a sole owner. And also, if I ever do become a corporation to where there actually could be investors, it's a lot easier process to transfer business licenses in Washington State. So today's a joke. It's a gag. Nobody actually is investing. In terms of how much I've invested, it's been maybe like $1,000 to $2,000 in this past year. But you know what? Y'all gotta start somewhere. Kamala is saying she might give small businesses a huge tax break. So, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, no politics here. I love giving input. Okay. Sorry. I I, I hate streaming from a laptop because, like, I can't see my whole screen. Okay. Are we ready now? Crew, are we ready? Zoom in a bit. Wait, why? Oh, I hit chat on this scene. I was wondering where you guys were. I was like, where did you guys go? <clears throat> I invest through betting on belief. Wait, gambling is bad. We, we we never advocate for gambling, but no narcs. There may be a gotcha lino print pack coming out soon. That that's not gambling though. Huge difference. You actually pay taxes, yeah. Um, the business tax, okay. Like because since Shopify charges some taxes on purchases that the consumer makes, they report it on my behalf. And then also I have to pay state and city taxes every quarter. And then if I have like, once you make a certain income threshold, like tens of thousands of dollars a month, you have to report monthly to your city tax or to your city business ordinance, whatever the fuck. So my tax rate in Washington state for any business it's like, uh, I think it's like 17 or 18 percent. It's kind of high. But, you know, it pays for roads, so it's chill. Okay. Also, you know what's crazy for tax reasons? For, like, owners, they get all the profits. That's their payout. That's why investors go crazy whenever their metrics are down, like, 0.1 percent. Anyway, enough yapping. Let's begin. I'll play the person who has a question but always gets to go. <laughs> okay, I'm now realizing. Wait, should I? I should put myself over here, huh? Yeah, this. Okay. Wait, where am I? Fuck! Oh, I almost slipped. Okay, I gotta put myself. I'm gonna die from my green screen. Okay, this is better, right? Yeah, I'm not blocking the text. Okay, now we're good. Editor. Okay. The plan for today is going over the art trap, which we already did. Guys, peace out at my shopify.com. Purchase the new or Orchards Lino print set. I really like it. Both colored and lino versions are available. Use code Twitch10 for $10 off. 
Also, throughout today, I'll be going. The main points will be going over the results for the Peace and Art Quarter Four Consumer Survey, going over the content plan for Quarter Four and then Quarter One of Twenty Five, and then a few announcements. But watch till the end for the announcements. And no, I don't have a fancy clicker. I'm sorry. Wait. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was like, did I put two of the same slide? Okay. So, first, we're going to go over the plan. Now, for context, this first nation is 29 slides, but I promise it won't take more than an hour. And if you're wondering, you are not going to get paid for this meeting. We'll just count it towards your regular hourly wages. Please and thank you. So the main points we're going to be going over for the basic plan overview will be target audience, main product themes or types, my local and online influence, and also the types of content in which I'll be posting online in the upcoming quarter in the next year in 25. First off, what is my desired target audience? If anybody has taken a branding class or have a general understanding of any type of e-commerce or business, you have to identify your primary demographic. Who do you want to market towards? Who do you want to buy your product? And then once you figure out your target audience, that is very much, that very much will dictate how you go about basically every business decision you make. Now I did take one branding class in college and I got a B. So you know what? I know a little bit. So in general, oh wait, I forgot to include something. Hold. Yes, this is a royalty-free image. Pause. I made this image, and I didn't even use it. So annoying. Oh, you know why? It's because it's for a... Sorry, I have to add a slide. Sorry guys, invest today, please and thank you. I was totally prepared for today. Okay, now I ha I added a slide for later. Don't put PSA2 Pro. Don't don't worry, investors, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay. I'm locked in. I am locked in. Okay, anyway, back to it. So my desired target audience are individuals 18 to 35. They have the most disposable income. They are the most likely to get emotionally invested in things. So, and that's also the largest purchasing demographic in general. So that is my goal. In terms of gender, as Biden said, <laughs> there's at least three. <laughs> but in terms of demographic, I don't care. I, I genuinely think everybody can enjoy art. But in terms of like marketing and video content, it's unsure like who you want to market towards. I definitely think more girlies like art, but like I, I don't care. Because I definitely feel like both male and female gays will gravitate towards most anything when it comes to visuals and arts. Obviously there's some there. Individuals might like more, but I don't really have a defined art style yet, so... It's chill. I don't care. Um, third point, they gotta have money. Especially when bad inflation is so high right now. We need individuals who have disposable income. In the sense of, you don't want to scam people, but obviously anything that is a luxury purchase will always be targeted towards those who have extra money. You know, the ones who have union jobs, the ones who sit at a desk and make like 30 bucks an hour. That is who we are targeting right now. Next point, we need to target those who like to collect. That is a big reason why, for most every single art drop, there is collections. There's also an option to buy a bundle of each individual piece as a group. Because just based on how I shop and how people in my life shop, and evident by the Stanley Cup trend, people will want to buy every single variation if they truly like the product. So when it comes to arts, you want to make sure things are accessible and also having some variety in your product is also good because then you hit a larger demographic in terms of interest, which we'll go into later. 
And the final point for the desired audience is non-artists. This is something I will touch on later, but the reason why is I know I'm a creative and I find that I don't buy a lot of art, mainly because I'm a brokey. But don't worry, stocks will be through the rough soon. The main reason being is I always have the immediate thought whenever I go to an art or craft fair, I'm like, oh, I could make that. Or I know somebody who can make that, which is not the healthiest thought to have because you still want to like uplift and support other artists. But to be honest, I don't like decorating my place. You guys can see. Oh, wait, we're in the office space. In, in my room, in my personal bedroom, I don't have anything hanging on my walls. I don't like displaying things. I don't like shadows. It, it freaks me out. So I am not the target demographic in which I would market myself to for peace and art. And that makes sense. Because if I was the target demographic, then I would just make art for myself for fun, right? But what are we... Shit, I had a joke. I had a joke. But you know, with the rise of the internet, you must commoditize your hobbies, right? And just to clarify, I'm different from the rest. I do actually have an art degree that you suffers paid for with your tax dollars because I'm disabled. Anyway, I check up lots of boxes. You guys ever go to like a local independent website and they have like POC owned, veteran owned, um, woman owned, and they list all this shit in like the owner's description. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I live in a super liberal area, right? And there are a few shops who have it like embossed on their windows. They're like POC owned, woman owned. And it's like vinyl on their window. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> like <laughs> you would not be able to do that in like other states, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, Washington is lived up. Okay. So that is the main target demographic that we want to target at the present time and in the near future. So now Time for some graphs. Now, I got these results based on how people responded to the consumer survey, which I did post on Twitter. And the consumer survey had a total of 10 submissions, which is small, but still adequate because the usual uh, click turnover rate, click turnover rate, which is whenever you have a call to action, the percentage of individuals who actually click a link and then also the percentage of individuals who make a purchase after clicking a link is less than 1%. So if 10 people clicked on a link and filled out the survey, that means mathematically a thousand people saw that link or saw that post, which I looked at my post analytics and it was less than a thousand people. So that means the CTR rate is actually adequate. I only expected seven or five submissions, but I got 10. Granted, one of them was my sister, but she still counts. So yeah, 10 submissions is adequate. It would have been 50, but you didn't let me make fake accounts. You know, I don't like hearing that type of inflated information from my shareholders. You know, next meeting, we're going to be talking about who's going to get more shares. So I think you're on the bottom of the list. But anyway, so we had 10 people submit. So thank you to those who submitted anonymously. I did not share or get any of your information. Obviously. Most of you guys are from my Twitch chat, so, like, I know who was who based on what some of you guys wrote. I digress. Thank you for submitting. But 10 was the goal. 10 is actually pretty good. Usually, um, user demographic surveys need a minimum of 100 to be, like, a decent representation of a desired group. So 10 is pretty good for somebody who has no clout, right? I put my name on mine. No, you didn't. You put a different name. You put my name. Anyway, give my shares to Marcy. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Okay, so now time for some graphs and some stats for you guys. Like I said, a lot of the information that I used to come to conclusions were based off of the sur survey results and then also like anecdotal stuff that I've seen. First, who of the 10 people like collecting? If you look at the graph, 50% of people said they would buy some things of a collection 20 percent said they would buy every single option now obviously this is a smaller demographic this is a smaller survey pool but still knowing that two people would buy everything from something that they like is huge that is what we want we want more blue next quarter we need more blue guys we need more blue um 
We also had 20% not really and 10% no, not at all. I personally, I don't like collecting stuff. I don't like clutter. But, you know, this having 50 and 20, so 70% wanting to buy at least a minimum to all of a collection of something that they like is huge. That is good. Now, obviously, this is in general not for, like, my work or whatever, but this is still good to know. Next up. Who in the peace and art community is an artist? 60% no, and 40% do art for fun. Now, I had a third option for I'm a professional artist. Sag, nobody's a pro. I'm sorry, none of you guys have an art degree like me. Am I a pro artist, technically? I mean, I've taken some, like, freelance. I have gotten a small bag. Anyway. So, something that I felt when it comes to looking at artists, like, independent artists, like, posting on social media and stuff, and, like, even in the local scene, it feels too much of, I want to support you because I like you as a person, not because I like the art. And I don't want that to necessarily be, like, my angle. Obviously, I'm very small. I'm very young. I'm 25. Young. And obviously, I'm not super skilled yet. But I still think I have a decent eye for design and intent when it comes to my work. So, compared to like 5, 10 years, I will get better. Where was I going with that point? Oh, so, like, I just genuinely want people to enjoy what I do. I don't want people to buy because they like me. I want people to like what I do. That's just how I am. I like when people appreciate my actions over myself, which is a charm response. I talked about that in therapy this morning. Anyway, next slide. Is writing considered art? It's still expressive, but it's not necessarily art. This is a very key, pivotal stat that we got. How much will consumers spend in terms of buying artwork? I want you guys to know the average rate in which an artist make in the United States is like $60 an hour. And obviously it's an average, but it's still like people have years of experience, people who do physical mediums, and that's for like custom work. $50 is the national average. I only charge 26, but that's because I'm 25. I think what a lot of people fail to uh, realize when it comes to purchasing any type of art is when you go to college, you go to college for like two, four, eight, ten years, however long you go, and your salary increases with how much more education you have. But since art is something you learn typically when you're younger and you can get a higher degree of education for it, the reason why the compensation rates for artwork is slightly higher is because the, when you're drawing from when you're like 13 to 18, that's still five years of training. Maybe not full time. That's five years of experience, right? So that's just my opinion on it. Obviously, I'm biased. But that is why you'll see varying prices for different artists because they dictate how much they charge because it's kind of like it's, it's a combination of service labor because you are paying for the artist's time, basically. And that's something I want everybody to keep in mind. Not just for what I do, but when they interact with any art. The only reason why you see like a $5 mug at Target is because that is made with like foreign labor where like the laborers are getting exploited. Like the whole debacle of paying like a hundred bucks for a coffee mug that is made for like an independent person. It's because an actual person, an artist made that. It's not like it's mass produced, made with a mold, right? So just something to keep in mind. Now, not everybody knows this, but everybody watching now you know. Okay. Going back to the actual stats, 50% of consumers said they would be willing to spend 10 to $50. So in terms of labor, that means only one to two hours of labor for a piece of artwork, which is fine. That's anticipated. Because a lot of people, when they see art, they consider like prints or stickers. Those aren't made by a person typically. Those are made by a computer, machine. Yes, an artist still made the image, but it's not like the artist is making and cutting every single sticker, typically. That is the reason why you see lower price point prints and stickers at like vendors or fairs or online. Not many people sell fine art or originals even. Okay. 
40% said 50 to 100. That is our target demo. That is our target. So a person who is willing to spend 50 to 100, that is about two to five hours worth of labor. That is good. That is good. Because an average piece of artwork, depending on obviously the size and medium, will take about that amount of time. So that is, with my understanding, you have to consider how much income a person makes and then how much they want to spend on leisure or like extra items. And then 10% said 100 to 250. Now that guy, we got to figure out who that guy is. Obviously it was anonymous, but we got to find that guy. We got to find him. Okay, so it's interesting. Not a single person said 1 to 10. Interesting. You guys are not stupid. You guys know that buying something for 10 bucks is probably going to be shit. Who said 250? You single? Yo! <laughs> also, nobody said more than 250. So that means everybody's a pro key. Granted, this is a small survey pool, but you know. You know, I bet it was Kim who said it. <laughs> anyway. I got a commission piece from a friend with personalized porcelain necklace. And I was made by how much little money she charged you. I mean, obviously it's a friend. And then also, like, people just don't know how much to charge for their work. It's vastly different. Because when you go and you clock in at a job, you're like, you make $10. You make $15 here. But when you work for yourself, it's very hard to dictate your rates. So if you are working for yourself in any capacity, any type of contract work, whether you're doing physical labor, creative work, look up national averages, look at your own experience, look at your education level. And genuinely, if somebody likes what you do and they genuinely want it, they will pay it. Now, I'm not saying you should charge like uh, $1,000 an hour. That's insane. Unless you're talking to like some billionaire like Bezos. Go for it. But now you're worth. She spent three days and it was less than ten dollars. What? What? <laughs> you're scamming. <laughs> Wait, you're the asshole. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, so that was our target demographic and also going over some of the results of the survey. Next up. Product types and themes. Now, I know this is an art business, but ultimately, we are here to sell, and you guys are here to buy, buy, buy. <laughs> so, <laughs> at this time, one of my main motives and values that I want to hold for my business, since it's e-commerce, and since I got a lot of time on my hands, because, you know, I don't have a real job yet. I'm working on it. Guys, click subscribe right now. Maybe YouTube will become my job. At this time, for anybody who wants my artwork, I will not settle for you to get a print. I've shared my opinion on people who sell prints in the past. But if you got the time, because art is a piece of you. It's your expression. It's your lived experiences. And it's also your skill. If somebody wants to have that, let them have it, you know? Because I think whenever you get a digital print, I'm sure you guys have seen like digital canvas prints. It doesn't have the same look or feel or texture of like an actual physical painting. If you guys have ever seen the Starry Night, the painting is literally like this thick. It's crazy. It's because it's layer after layer of paint. Obviously, I don't work with that type of medium because it's very expensive to get plaster and that much paint. But a digital print will never fully emulate the full visual effect or experience of a piece of art. Piece of art. <laughs> anyway, at this point, I will still only be doing physical artwork. Only originals, no prints. I did research on what type of prints would be good if I ever did branch off to that. And I will only do that. If I start doing like vendors or if I somehow one day, one day have like an actual shop or like a gallery, because like storing like tens or hundreds of originals in a building is not, not a good idea. <laughs> like... <laughs> so at this time, still only selling originals. The only thing that is technically a print 
is the Lino block prints, but it's technically a stamp, and then I print the stamped carved image. It's not a digital computer print. Okay. Talking about products, we are going to touch a little bit on mass produced products. So that can be um, stickers, that could be lanyards, that could be keychains. The main difference is obviously those would be very difficult to make in house without having the proper machinery and also the staff to do so. The caveat to making mass produced products is obviously the upfront cost. So in order to like get um, sample products made, it's usually two to 500 for like anything you order, unless it's stickers. Stickers are just cheap to make. If somebody is charging you five bucks for a sticker, they're scamming. Let me just say, I've looked at different websites to see the production cost. Five bucks is a scam. But anyway, so for any type of mass produced product for a factory would have to make it, it would be a pretty astronomical upfront cost. Obviously, I don't have that right now, but hopefully in summer 2025, it'll happen. We'll make it work. And also something that we will touch on is custom work. And what does that mean for custom work? Let me tell you. This will be the first announcement for today. Guys, editor put like something on screen. No, don't. I'm going to have to edit this. The first announcement for today is today, October 4th, starting next Friday, October 11th, I will be opening up custom work commissions. Now, I will be doing a separate explanation and post for this, but you guys heard it here first. Commissions finally opening from artwork from Peason. Now, more information will be out next week. But just to give a brief explanation, I want to be able to gain capital to invest more to the business. And some have expressed wanting custom pieces from me in the past. Like in the past, before I even opened the business. So there is some interest. Some, I mean like two or three. But still, there's some. The main caveat will be, it will only be for personal, non-commercial use. So if you want me to make a logo, no, no. I'm not doing commercial work. The reason why is because it's the contracts are more complicated. That, I, I just don't want to fuck with that right now. It'll only be for personal work. So if you want to get something for yourself made, if you want to get a gift for somebody else, then it's something I will try to do for you. In terms of what I can make, fuck it, I'll make anything. Fuck it! <laughs> How about PFPs? I mean, that's... It depends. Like, commercial meaning if... um When I say commercial, I mean, like, for a business or somebody, if you're using it to make money. Like, if somebody wants a logo or if somebody wants a web page or if somebody's going to use it to make t-shirts, then the, the main differential between personal and commercial usage is personal... They're not going to resell it. They're not going to redistribute it. But commercial, it is something that is going to be in the public eye. So you have to talk about proper accreditation and then also redistribution. So like if somebody is going to use an image for like an edit or something, I could be entitled to royalties, right? Um, so that, that's the main differential. Uh, it's personal is like a one-off thing versus commercial where that could be like a long-term contract. So that is why I'm not going to fuck with commercial commissions at this time. Okay. Um, yeah. So in terms of what I can make, anything. If you have an idea, as long as it's something physical that I can make and mail to you, and appropriate, I'll try. Also, no digital art. I don't fuck with it. I don't like it. The main things I want to offer is I think India Ink Portraits. I love how they come out. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And then also, um, I was thinking like, if somebody wants a t-shirt, like I could paint a t-shirt. If somebody wants a tote bag, I could just paint a tote bag. Like, there's so many things. Mixed media, you can do like anything. Do anything. Okay, now time for some stats. This broke my heart, but also made me a little bit happy. We asked people if they preferred original artwork or digital prints. 
I was looking at the results, and surprisingly, 70% preferred original artwork. Now, I kind of failed to realize the connotations of not specifying the huge difference between them, you know what I mean? Like, I hope people interpret it as, like, replicas or actual original fine art pieces, not, like, a computer print. But anyway, still, that's a pretty decent margin. That's pretty good. That means people anticipate a higher price point, which is good. Going back to physical artwork, I asked people what desired medium they like visually the most. Surprisingly, 60% like black and white India inks. Now, no narcs. If you follow my art Instagram, peace and underscore art, on my Instagram stories and highlight, you can see all my Inktober drawings. I haven't missed a day. Yes, it's day four, but still, I haven't missed a day. <laughs> and honestly, I like the inks. They're fun. They're comforting for me. And interesting, nobody said they didn't like anything. So that means if I do any of this, at least somebody will like it. Because, you know, I've been learning art history. I've been practicing mediums on my own. And there's so much I want to do. There's genuinely so much I want to try and do. So, yeah. So this basically tells me that at least somebody will enjoy whatever medium I use. You know what? W. Okay. Now this is mainly stats for whenever I inevitably do do prints, which L prints. Because whenever you make a mass-produced product, that will be used or handled more. You have to think about the durability, the actual substance of the item. And the majority of people said they just hang the print on their wall without a frame. Guys, don't do that. Don't do that. Because even if something is not in direct sunlight, things will fade under UV artificial light. So, don't do that. If it's a print you genuinely like, put it in a UV resistant frame or keep it in a drawer. It will fade over time. Now my paintings. And this goes for any type of art medium as well. Not just did not just dye ink, computer ink, any type of paint will fade over time. But you know what? My paintings use house paint. And they vary, it'll only fade after like 10 years. So buy a painting today, guys. Look at this. It's still the same color after a year and a half. If you guys want to see the effect of UV and sunlight on art pieces, just look it up on YouTube. People have done videos. Get a visual indicator. Put your stuff in frames. Okay, so I'm looking, I have to like walk in. Half of you guys said you frame it. Good job. Use that Michael's coupon. Frame your shit. Next. Because <laughs> uh, the main reason why I don't like prints is because like I, I don't like the morality of it. And then also like it will fade over time. There are some type of dye inks that will fade after like two years versus one year. But those are like twice as expensive as a computer print, which I haven't looked into. But nobody is using finer inks. You can ask whatever artist you buy from, but they probably are not using it. Me looking at my art not in a frame. Frame it right now. Go to Michael's, use that digital coupon and frame it. If you want it to stay the same quality, frame it. But you know what? You don't have to frame my paintings because they're fade resistant. W. Next up. If you don't know, I hate stickers. But it seems like the majority of you guys like stickers. So this question was just to ask, how do people use your stickers? Because depending on where the sticker will be stored, placed, stuck upon, it has to have different qualities, right? You can't use a paper sticker on a water bottle because it will peel off. So the majority of people said, they keep their stickers on their folders or binders. I assume all of you guys are in college or school. 
graduate already. Second majority for crafting or scrapbooking. Interesting. Scrapbooking, I think, is one of the most like normy types of art forms. You know, I did it when I was like three. I just stuck stuff on the paper. The stickers at Michael's are expensive. So I don't know if I would in the recent future sell individual stickers, but I kind of like the idea of doing themed sticker sheets. I think that's really cute. I'll say it. I think that is kind of feasible. And also, people said their computer on their coffee machine. Why would you put it on the coffee machine? Nobody put it on their car window slash bumper. Nobody likes bumper stickers? Is that like a boomer thing to do? I was genuinely surprised nobody said bumper sticker. I mean, I guess people use magnets now, right? I don't know. Also, water bottle. So I think if anybody offers a sticker product, figure out what, how your target demographic will use it, and then maybe offer different type of finishings that way people can use the sticker for the appropriate method, right? Ooh, this one, I was genuinely really surprised. So I asked people what type of mass produced products would they like or most likely buy. So I, I just threw stuff on the wall. I was like, let's see what people will want. I was genuinely really surprised. Got your pawn, got zero. But I assume it's because most of you guys are white. <laughs> this is America. Gotcha Pone is like the little clear capsule bubble things that you get from like a coin machine. Very popular in Japan. If you go to Seattle, the Ujimaya, that has a Gotcha Pone section. I really want to go. I really want to go. Um, the most popular thing with 60% keychains. That one is really interesting. So whenever you're making keychains, you have to think about like, do you want to get like a enamel pin finish? Do you want to get like an acry acrylic finish? Keychains also have to be very durable. So that would require like really good production. So out of everything, a keychain is probably like the second or third most uh, higher price point to produce. She means gamble. Yeah, who likes gambling? Type one. Type one. <laughs> uh, just a gentle reminder, guys, we are an hour to stream. So you know what? Click follow. And if you buy something from the store today, you get a free hollow print. Ain't no way. It's gonna be huge. The next most popular things were coloring books and stickers. L stickers. I hate stickers. But coloring book. This is something that I've said that I want to make at some point in the future. I would love to make a coloring book. I would love. Also, I saw on TikTok, somebody made like a sticker book. And then it had like different layers of clear paper. So you're kind of like making a picture book illustration, but with stickers and like layering stickers on top of each other. That was really cool. But the problem with making books is that that will be like an upfront multiple thousand dollar cost. Guys, invest today. Click subscribe. Wait, no, I don't have subs on this channel. <laughs> Just make individual stickers. No, that's dumb. I don't like buying individual stickers uh, it's because like that's not how i shop you know that's not how i shop uh what was next another random thought i had was puzzles and it was literally i thought of it the night before i published the survey like how cool would it be to like get a hand-painted puzzle it would be expensive as shit because I was looking up the cost of buying, like, a blank puzzle. Dude, it's, like, 15 fucking dollars. How, how is a blank puzzle 15 dollars? I don't get it. Granted, all those puzzle sheets came, like, together. It's not like it was a box of, like, puzzle pieces. It was a sheet of a pre-assembled puzzle. But still, 15 dollars? That means if I sell that shit, it's gonna be 15 dollars. Plus cost of labor, it's gonna be like a fucking hundred dollar puzzle. Type one if you'd buy a hundred dollar puzzle. Now, be completely honest, would you buy a hundred dollar puzzle? Anyway. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, how was it fifteen dollars for a blank puzzle? 
<laughs> Another one that stood out to me was scrapbook paper. My dream, my goal is to design scrapbook paper. I did scrapbooking a lot when I was younger, so it has like a huge like impact on me. And also making origami paper, which is basically scrapbook paper. I think that would be so cool. And there's probably a way to make scrapbook paper. And you know what? Maybe I'll do it. We love totes? Yes. Somebody wrote in, give me a tote, please. I did see that result. Tote bags? If I'm going to do a tote bag, I want it to be banging. I want it to be the best tote bag you'll ever use. Because you can buy, like, just basic-ass tote bags and slap your paint on it. That's chill. But how cool would it be to design a tote bag from scratch? And like, Peace and Art makes the best tote bag ever. Because when I think about tote bags, obviously they have different purposes. In Washington State, they charge like an extra eight, th eight cents, I think, to use a plastic bag. So a lot of people use tote bags or like grocery bags from home. And... My goal when it comes to tote bags, I want to make a tote that is, like, the only tote bag I use. So, maybe by next summer, may I would be down to, like, just get, like, a basic fabric tote bag and do painting on that. But in the future, within five years, I want to design my own ass tote bag. I want that. I want that. Also, talking about, like, tote bags, you guys notice how, like, Victoria's Secret, like, whenever you spend, like, a hundred bucks, they give you a free bag. Do you know why they do that? It's so you, the consumer, uses that tote bag and spread their branding images as you go out and about. Like, Walmart's been doing this. A lot of stores will give you free tote bags for that reason. Now, how sick would it be to incentivize you, the consumers, and the investors? If somebody makes a large purchase, we just give them a free bag. Hmm. What do you guys think? Type one if that's a banger idea. I would love to do that now. It probably would be good to do now. That way you can just build more brand awareness, like word of mouth. But a tote bag would be sick. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. It's really interesting because, like, my sister, dude, she's the type of person who will buy everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> When I, when I had her fill up the survey, she was, like, checking all the boxes. <laughs> so, like, she, my sister, if she had money, she's the dream consumer. <laughs> like, if she likes something, she will buy all of it. Sadly, she doesn't like my art, but she would get it for free anyway. And another thing that I did leak in a past stream was press on nails. Depending on what state you reside in. You may need a redistribution license because it's not like you're making the nails. But plot twist, in order to sell press-on nails, you do not need a license. Like a cosmetology, I think it's called, where you can, where you're like licensed to like do nails. You don't need that shit. As long as you are not telling people how to put the nails on or physically putting the nails on people, you can just sell press-on nails. I think a really cool thing to do would be make press on nails inspired by my art pieces. That way, you know, you can take a piece of it everywhere you go. And also it's reusable. And it's another way for like word of mouth spread. Like when you see nails, you're like, oh, where'd you get it done? And you'd be like, oh, I got it from piece and art of my shop Um, That is something that I want to save up and invest in first. I think that is probably the thing that will be the most successful just based on like online trends and the like. But it also has a... Pretty big upfront cost. Like, that would cost... I would have to buy sanitary equipment, entirely new polishes, brushes. Uh, that would be, like, a $500 upfront cost, to be transparent. So, let me get the investors. Guys, click follow right now. Print your email to the back and put your at on it. That's vandalism. And I don't want to do crimes. Next slide. Theme preferences. I was just throwing stuff at the wall here just to see what visuals people would be most interested. 
Because honestly, I've been practicing a whole bunch of things. I've been practicing anatomy, animals, all the like. It's hard to like decide on one thing, you know what I mean? And I think if I stick to doing one art drop like every month-ish, I can probably do a bunch of different things. And you know what? When I was looking at the results of this, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. But let's be honest. I have my whole freaking life to make stuff. I'm 25. And the hopes, like long-term goals, by the time I'm 50, I want a shop. I want a gallery. I got 25 years to make all this. So stay tuned. This was still a really good insight to see what people visually like the most. Maybe they might not buy, but like still. They might like engage with content if they like what it, what they see. So yeah, W. Sadly, <laughs> also, how did nobody pick people? <laughs> that was really surprising to me. Like, do none of you guys have like the booby artwork? Like, what's going on? How did nobody say people? You should have purchased stocks instead of watching cartoons. I'm not going to say anything. Also, guys, we're an hour into stream. Click follow right now. Thank you. Oh. I explained this already. <laughs> but, um, just to read it right again. Commissions will be opening next Friday. Just to give a little bit of insight on the process, um, it will be a separate tab under the shop section of my website. You'll be given a Google form link to submit. I will only have one commission taken at a time because it's anticipated a commission will take five to 20 hours. And obviously you want to give people a quality product. So the main format, which will be more specifics later, will be people can submit a form. There will be a scheduled Zoom meeting or Microsoft Teams. I kind of like Teams better, to be honest. And then a client will be given a contract. They will have to pay the upfront. Dude, what's it called? Would they pay a flat rate fee at the start? I, f I, fuck, I fuck, I wrote it down. Uh, deposit, deposit. They have to pay a deposit fee. And then whenever the, they will be given email updates as the project is worked on, they'll get feedback, reworks may or may not be done. And then before the final product is delivered, the client will pay. And you know what's sick? Since I have an official business account now, we now have a business PayPal. Second announcement, you guys might have noticed, I do have donate in the Twitch title. We now have an official PayPal donation link for the Peace In channel, but it's only for Peace and Art. Uh, mainly for like tax reasons. It's a lot better for bookkeeping if it's on like a business account. So guys, Click donate right now. And if you, it's $5 minimum, capped at 20. If you donate $5, you get free TTS. Only on the Peace in Our channel, though. Only here. But you know what? I'll put the donate overlay. Oh, wait. That's, wait, shoot. Wait, that's not the link. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, let me, oh, no. Wait, shoot. Wait. <laughs> wait. I fixed the link in my about section, but not the chat box. Um, tipping here. I'll just copy the link, guys. Click the link I just put in the chat room to donate today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll fix the command later. I fixed it everywhere but there, anyway. So, yeah, just to clarify, you are not making charitable donation, you are, you are technically donating money to the company, just, just to be fully clear. It's not going to me personally, it's going to my business bank account, so, like, it's kind of giving money to me, but, like, not directly. Okay, that's all. Um, another interesting stat we got, one of the free response questions was, would you ever get a commission work from anybody? And four out of ten people said they would. So that means there's a 40% of the survey pool of individuals who would get a custom piece done. Maybe not for me, but it still shows that there is a market for it, you know? Also, the most surprising stat, look at that. The chart here is individuals who would get a caricature done. 70% for yourself. 5% for partner. 5% for 
family or friend, 0% said they had no interest. So that means out of the people surveyed, 100% would get a caricature. Which to me is crazy. That's like the most unanimous answer we had in the survey. That to me was insane. 100% interest in anything is crazy. Now, some of you guys may know, back in 2020, I did apply to her caricature business, which I was going to get an interview for probably because they were submitting my application to like higher ups, but then they couldn't get back to me because of restrictions during the startings of the lockdown in 2020. So, you know what? Peason could have been a caricature artist and I was practicing. I haven't done it in a while, but you know, maybe I'll dust off the markers and open up caricatures under custom work. Maybe I'll do it. And I feel like that could be good for like stream content too. Like bring people onto a video call and then just do a caricature. I think that'd be like really fun streams. Okay. Man, still 100% interest is insane. I cannot explain to you how insane that is. That is crazy. Also, it is pouring right now. Okay. Next section. The local and online influence for peace and art. I have done some research on local markets. So looking at local art vendors, now is not the best time because in Washington it's raining. Right now it's literally pouring. But the standard for local markets, whether at like a street fair or like getting like a spot at like an art shop, majority will either take a percentage of your income of your sales or charge you a flat rate per day or per month. The average rate in my area is one to $200 just to have a spot in a local art shop. In addition to commission or royalties. So that means in order for me to like justify selling stuff at the local level, I, I would just be hemorrhaging money. And it's like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Not a lot of people will buy art unless they know the person in some capacity. Not many people walk into art shops. Those art shops remain profitable beca because they charge the artists the flat rate. At this time, probably no local market scene. Sorry. It's just, I don't, it's not worth the capital. Um, something that I haven't done is post on social media. Mainly because investors, close your ears. I'm lazy. What? Ain't no way. Thank you for the $10. I really do appreciate that. Here, there's the alert. But thank you. Thank you, Tooth, for the $10. Can we get some woots and chat? Thank you, man. That is money in my pocket. Thank you. Don't you? It was supposed to say Steve Jobs. Do you know what? I changed the settings so it has your Twitch name, dumbass. No, I'm sorry. This is a professional meeting. I'm sorry. I should not have said that. <laughs> they robbed you. No, it's mainly because this is my business account. I can't afford you guys to like have pee pee poo poo as your name you know I, I we can't afford that no i'm sorry clip command is not enabled on this channel uh we'll talk about it later but genuinely thank you for the donation you know what ten dollars can buy ten dollars can buy the large version of the orchard prince guys exclamation point shop buy one today but thank you dude wait so does that mean you're a shareholder now you know what I wish? I wish, because you know how in Twitch chat, you only get a badge if you're a subscriber? Wouldn't it be sick if I could manually give people badges? Wait. 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 What if we, okay. Okay, so the whole gimmick of shareholders is a joke, right? But what if we gave VIP to individuals who donate to this channel? Because you're technically an investor indirectly you're, you're not getting shares but you're technically investing in the channel i think that's i think that's kind of chill i because like lore wise that makes sense 
Because none of you chatters are going to get VIP like normally. I'm kind of down for that. What do you guys think? People who donate at any point get a badge. I think that's, I think it's a cute idea. I think it's cute. I think it's cute. What about the other VIPs? There are no VIPs in this channel. It's, I think, you know what? Fuck it, we'll do it. From this point on, if anybody donates to this channel, you will get VIP because you're technically an investor. Wait, do I have VIP if I'm a non-affiliate? Oh my god, I do. I think I split your name right. Guys, invest today and you get a VIP badge. Literally pay to win. Anyway. Thank you, too. Okay. What was I saying? She. Oh, okay, talking about social media. I don't post on social media because, one, I'm lazy, and two, AI sucks. Something that I've been debating for a while. I probably should start posting. The only place that had my art was my website and YouTube, but YouTube very openly said that they use all their videos for AI now. So it's kind of like, well, what are we to do? We're all just slaves to capitalism. What do I do? At this point, decent art needs to prioritize exposure, profits, and sustainability, because I think in order to keep your license, you have to be profitable within seven years, or it's three years, I don't remember. So guys, we've got a few years left to make this work. It's come, I've come to the conclusion that it's probably time for me to just take the L and start posting. It's like, no matter what we do, you can never have full control of what you, of what you produce, what you speak, just due to lack of regulation. So hopefully in the next one to three years, we'll get more legislation on the legality of AI and generative products but it's kind of at a point where like i just need to post they're stealing it anyway what's the point they'll steal it with permission they'll steal it without so it's kind of like what's the point also blogging i'll say it blogging is fucking stupid it's just visual yapping i don't know how many people consume blogs anymore i haven't posted in a while because it's just like i don't feel like doing it and I think if I'm going to invest time into something, I want to do it and see the value of it. You know what I mean? Just post about BTS. But it's like, what can I post? I'm pretty boring. You know what I mean? Also, like, I don't like talking about BTS. Besides the group. Um, pros and cons of social media. More exposure. With the shorts and reels algorithm, people will just see your stuff even if they don't want to. Cons? AI. People could steal your ideas. Talking about stealing ideas, if you're doing any type of product design, this goes for any creative, anybody who wants to make a product or an idea, do not post on social media until you have a patent or until you're selling. Okay? Don't talk about an idea. Don't show sneak peeks. If it's something you genuinely think is going to be successful or take off, don't post it until it's ready for sale. Just don't. You don't want somebody copying it. People are going to steal your stuff as long as you're the first person to do it. It all comes back to you, baby. Um, uh, talking about just, I have here hours committing per week overhead cost. I said this on stream last week. For now, I do everything myself. So that means producing, researching, posting, website management. In terms of my main Twitch channel, streaming. Editing, posting, planning. In terms of hours, it's 30 to 40 hours a week. So it's it's a job. It's a job. And I have seen it from that lens for the majority of time that I have been streaming. But it's kind of dawned upon me. If somebody were paid to do all the hours of work that I would be doing and the fields of work that I am doing, it would be a... Minimum $3,000 a month. Because it's skilled labor. It's technically personality slash acting. It's at least $3,000 a month 
of labor that I've been doing for free. Granted, it's for my own volition, it's for my own business endeavors, for my own career, no matter how big or small I can be. That's still $3,000 worth of labor that I could be investing into like actual labor. And it clicked for me last week where I was like, you know, if I am doing $3,000 worth of labor a month, I need to be trying harder. I need to be making more. And not in the sense of I will push myself to a breakdown. It's just the work I'm doing, I need to be putting more intent. I need to be planning more. Because if I genuinely want to succeed, I have to use all the tools at my disposal. And I definitely feel like my main channel is doing fine. Guys, subscribe to at PSIN17 on Twitch and YouTube. Underscore on Twitch. And you know, I've been doing weekly videos on the main channel with no growth. But you know, it's chill. But I've been neglecting the YouTube channel for the art channel. And I think if I invest more time into that channel and possibly less into the main, like maybe doing two videos a month on the main channel, two videos a month on our channel, giving them equal attention, maybe both will grow at the same rate. Who knows? No more being silly. It's not that I'm not being silly. I will still have fun with what I do. It's just I need to be like locking in my time when I'm not streaming. Because when I'm streaming, I'm goofing, I'm gaffing, you know, I'm having fun. But like when I'm offline, I'm just working. I need to be working offline with more intent. Because if I want to succeed, I need to have the mechanisms and processes in place for if I ever do get the luck, the chance of a mass amount of people finding me. So I need to have it in place. I need to have a backlog of videos for people to watch. So I'm going to be working on that. And also last point, just post. Just make shit. Make dumb shit. Just post. And that's for like the art content. I just need to post. Okay, this was an obvious question. How did people initially hear of the piece in our brand? 70% from Twitch. We're live on twitch.tv right now. Makes sense. 10% from YouTube? Crazy! Because on my art channel on YouTube, it only has 13 subscribers. So, crazy. Guys, subscribe to the art channel at Peace in Art on YouTube. Are we still voting for the main channel? For the hidden gem? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> please vote for Peace in underscore 17 on the hidden gem category, please. Please, we need, we need at least some semblance of chance. 10% from word of mouth, that was my sister. And then 10% was random browser search, which, how? Even when I search peace and art, my website doesn't come up right away. How did they find it? I think that was a fluke. So that means probably the most effective way is video content, which makes sense. If you think about it objectively, um, Instagram is for visuals. Not many people go to Instagram for visual, the visual feed either. They just go for reels, majority. And when you watch video content, there's like an instant connection. You're seeing something, you're hearing something, you probably feel something. That's why people will gravitate towards video and personalities than like um, traditional influencers that don't do video content because you're just looking at them. You don't know about them as much. So it makes sense that majority of people found it from video content. Guys, I'm disappointed. How many people follow the official Peace in underscore art accounts? Majority on Twitch. We did have somebody follow today, so plus one. Makes sense, because I do plug it the most on Twitch. Six on Twitter, which is good. Four on YouTube, W, so that's like a third of my sub count. One on TikTok, which I haven't posted on TikTok in a long time. And then three on Instagram. Two people said none of the above. How? How? How'd you even hear about this if you don't follow any of them, huh? But, obviously I'll plug it the most on my Twitch channel. 
six for Twitter is interesting because I don't post on that shit at all. I tag it, but I don't post because fuck Twitter. I mean, fuck X. And fuck my ex. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so the goal is to obviously bump those numbers up and hopefully get more following on YouTube and Instagram. I think those will be the most effective platforms. Instagram, obviously, visual platform. A lot of people go to Instagram for art, even though a lot of artists have left the platform because AI. And also YouTube, I definitely think that'll be the best platform for just expression. And we'll talk about expression later. At least two people are hate watchers. No, one for sure was my sister. Who doesn't follow me anywhere? <laughs> like, what? What? Ooh, interesting question. Now, I would have known if any of you guys lied during this one. Because I can look at my order history and see that only two people have made a purchase. 80% of people said they do not own any of my artwork. Valid. 10% said yes, they purchased. 10% said yes, they went through a past giveaway. That makes sense. I literally have a spreadsheet of whoever owns each item. I don't keep names. I just have like the order numbers and the item numbers. That way, if any of you guys scab and scalp, I will know and you will get banned from my website. I think I can do that. But it's just for like bookkeeping records to keep track of who has what piece and so on. But interesting. Now, the better question. Who wants to own some piece in art? Okay. So 20% said they currently own. W. 40%? Four people. That's four people. Said it's something they're currently saving for. That is huge. That means four potential customers. That means in the next quarter and by the end of this quarter, we got to convince them to buy, buy, buy. <laughs> That's still really good. 40%. That's just four people. But that's potentially four people that we can try to reel in. You know? And then 40% said no interest. Good thing these surveys were anonymous. <laughs> okay, don't worry. We're nearing the end. Oh, going back to local influence, I did this question that asked, like, if I were to have a booth or do, like, an art fair, would people go? 4% said if it were local to them. 3% said at a major convention. Okay, that makes sense. Um, if it were live-streamed, you'd watch the stream. A lot of people, I will see on my TikTok feed, they will just stream themselves at work, which to me is so weird. Like, how are you not in trouble? Like, I know I would get fired. But I think that would be I think that would be a cool stream, you know? I think that'd be a chill stream. Um, and then three people said they would not want to. But also zero percent said no interest, so I think I just worded that question weird. But still, that means if I stream it, we'll get ad revenue, guys. Click subscribe right now. That's chill. Because even if the event is live streamed and, you know, we get no sales during event, that's still like raising awareness. That's still good. And then like you guys would be able to like see me riz. <laughs> Dude, it's weird. This suit can almost fit me now. Like three more inches off my waist and I can button this shit. It's great. This, this shit never used to like go over my arms. Okay. The final subsection. We talked a little bit about YouTube. This is where we're going to work on an actionable plan for quarter four and quarter five, or quarter one, 25. So in terms of art, I want to try and maintain monthly art drops. We'll do Lionel prints every quarter during the shareholder stream. So that way I can do time for the actual stream and not have to worry about making the art. Because as we know, as we learned from Mr. Beast, we no longer can do um, illegal lotteries. So, <laughs> with every single art drop, I will do a stream promoting the product and then also demoing the product with a different color. And then whoever is the first person to make a, pro a purchase, kind of like last month, will get that special kind of shiny art piece. You know, just to encourage people to buy on launch. That way we can see metric-wise, if I ever do grow, 
we can see how much launch day is compared to like months or days in the future. Because I do look at my analytics and usually the day of an art drop, I'll get like a hundred clicks on the website, which I don't know if it's you guys just like clicking the link five times, but still we appreciate that it bumps our numbers, but still that's good. Or it usually gets like, it peaked at a hundred clicks and then I think the highest unique visitors I had in a day was 50, which somebody like me who has a very small following, we talked a little bit earlier about like CTR rate, the crossover rate. If 50 people clicked on a link, that means 50,000 people saw it, which is not my metrics. So that is a really good CTR rate. Uh, I think last month we had 30 people click on the art website link when I did a drop, and that's still really fucking good. Even if it's not leading to sales, at least people are clicking the link. The more time people click on a link, the more likely they will buy in the future. That's just proven. The more awareness, the more it's in your head, the more likely that brand will be like the first or second choice when they make a business or buy purchasing decision. So yeah, um, thank you for clicking the link. Um, yeah, so what we'll do. For every art drop, like I said, we'll do a demo piece of a different color. First person to make a purchase, first person to make a purchase will get the shiny print or shiny artwork. And then for Lionel prints, I don't want to do them too much because it's like an easier thing to make, but I also love carbon stamps. We'll just do it every quarter. Because I don't want to demo that. It's a bit hard to do on camera. Do the times I clicked, I got booted both times. Well, that's because your country of origin you can't buy anything. I tried to add it, but it wouldn't let me. <laughs> it's higher fees. So maybe at some point I'll add your country, but it's higher fees. So I'm like, shit. Shit. Um, okay. Content plan for social media. I think doing a different type of post on every platform is good. Like Instagram, I love... Their story function on how they can highlight stories. I love that. So I think for Instagram, I'll focus on like progress work, how to, I don't, I don't want to do how to content. Mm, I don't want to do that. How to content is kind of like teaching. If you're bad at something, you teach. Oh, probably TikTok. Uh, I don't know. Art is kind of like, I'm indifferent about posting like short form videos. Because I think in a short form video, you don't have enough time to appreciate the art, if that makes sense. I've only posted three YouTube shorts and TikToks of my artwork, and they were monologues with B-roll of me painting. And they did well. They did well for, like, new accounts. But it just felt disingenuous. Because when it comes to any type of media and social media online, there's always... A level of disingenuousness to it that's a big reason why people like streamers and youtubers is because there's like it feels more real and intimate right but I don't know it, it's still something like it's a mental hurdle I need to get over but I understand that's what people want so in the upcoming months I'll be planning on how to make things that skirt that line of giving pieces of myself, but also not becoming too intimate in terms of sharing. Sorry, I heard the music. Um, another thing. When it comes to any social media and branding online, there's always an aspect of consumerism to it in the sense of you know that it's fake, you know it's they're posting to make money. And that's another huge reason why I don't like posting for art stuff. You know, I'm fine with shilling on Twitch because, like, that's just fun shit. But for the art, it's like, I don't want... It's weird because, like, I, I want it to do well, but, like, I kind of like how I'm niche, you know? You know, indie, independent, I'm small. Is this an AI channel? No. Imagine, though. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> um. But yeah, so like, it's a weird line. I think, it, I don't know. I, I just need to brainstorm ideas. Maybe I'll pay for like a consulting on like how to do social media, but I don't know. Okay. 
something that I'll get more into specifics about is I want to officially launch the art channel. I have a few videos on it, but like I privated most of them because I kind of want to reshoot them. But the plan is simple for the YouTube channel. If I can do weekly videos on the main channel and bi-weekly or weekly videos on our channel, that is the goal. Now, maybe I can do that by myself, but that would be an insane workload to do on one person. So at any point, I make adequate money from the Twitch channel, my main, or the art business, then I'll just buy an editor. Or I'll, I'll pay an editor. I won't buy a person. Oh! But the plan is to officially relaunch the Peace and Art YouTube channel in January or very late of this year. So what we'll be doing is filming videos on stream on this channel, Peace and underscore Art on Twitch. That way, whenever I have time to edit, well, I'll edit that offline and then I'll post them on our channel and just schedule them for late December or early January. That way, because ideally for the art channel, I want to be two months ahead. Because in terms of art, art, unless you're doing trends, will always be relevant. It's not like you're doing topical games or topical subjects with art. So it kind of makes sense to backlog channel. It's kind of makes sense to backlog content for that channel. So that is what we'll be working on in the next two or three months. Now, I did say I wanted to make a gaming channel for the main channel content, but that, that's just generally too many hours of work. It, it's, I can't launch that this year in no fucking way. I'd rather invest more time into the art channel than the gaming channel. And the reason why everything is separate is because for business reasons, for money reasons, and also for branding reasons. Like... And also, if you bog people with, like, long form when they're used to short form or short form when they're used to long form, it won't perform well. So, yeah. Now, talking about YouTube, I posted this on Twitter the other day. But these are the demographics for my main YouTube channels. I have the Clips channel, which is my biggest platform. I think I have 1,600 subs on that channel. It's just clips from my streams. It's at peace and 70 clips on YouTube. It'll be in the description. The demographics. 93% male, which is crazy. Like it's mostly gaming clips, but still what? What? And then 6% female. What? And even crazier on my main channel, which is just weekly stream highlights, 100% female. <laughs> <laughs> like what like no <laughs> it makes no sense <laughs> like what happened it, did all like the six percent from the clips channel just watch the main channel like what is going on you know i thought they'd be kind of similar but what <laughs> so because the plan is the plan is simple to bring these existing audiences over to the art channel because when i do on my clips and my vod channel i make a community post promoting the weekly stream highlight and i do get a few likes on the post i assume i get i can't see the click through rate but i assume i get like one or two clicks so if i promote the art channel on these channels obviously the clips channel has a lot more subscribers i could probably bring over eh, maybe like 50 subscribers from these channels in the upcoming months you know 50 is a long shot Okay, more demographics. Talking about videos. This was, I think, the most important question of the survey. What types of videos do people watch? 4% or 40% said short form vertic vertical videos, which I don't want to make. L short form. I don't want to make short form. Because we'll talk about the reason why in a bit. 50% said mid-length slash progress videos, which is kind of what I want to make. 40% said long form speed painting, so like a 30 minute to an hour video. W for watch time. And then 2% said I don't watch art videos. It's those, probably the same two people who don't follow me. They're hate watchers. The reason why I don't want to do short form. It's, the whole point of short form video is it's supposed to be digestible. It's supposed to be quick. It's just to pass time. And I don't think art, especially since it's a like a higher level of expression, I don't want that to become passive content. But 
I think in terms of my time, I want to invest more time into mid and long form videos. Because if you're going to like sit and watch an art video, you probably want to enjoy what you're looking at, you know? That's just what I think. And when I consume art videos, I like watching mid length or just having it on the TV. Talking about how people consume art videos, I asked people, what is their engagement level? This is also a really important question. 20%, so two people said fully engaged, like watching and sitting and listening the whole time. 50% said passively watching between doing other things. That makes sense. That objectively makes sense. That's how a lot of people consume things nowadays. Like on your TV, on your computer, doing other tasks. That makes sense. 30% said watch in the background. So just having it on or just listening. Which, I don't know how you could do that with like an art video because it's supposed to be like more visually inviting. So, I don't know. And then 0% said none. I don't watch art videos. So objectively, what this means is that videos will probably not need a higher production value. So that means more editing, more VFX. Because if the majority of people aren't going to be like dialed in watching, you probably could do more chill, more calm videos. And I think that is what my current editing style is. For the main channel, I just do trimming. I don't do VFX mainly because of my visual impairment. If there's too many visual things moving, it fucks with my eyes. And then also when it comes to stream content, you're not watching the stream and there's like a lot of edits. It's just raw content. Just raw video feed. And I think that's why, like, Queso in particular, his YouTube is insane. Because his editors do very minimal trimming. Very minimal effects. They don't do any zooms. Not, no nothing. Like, you're literally, whenever you watch a YouTube video, you're watching a stream. And I think that's why he has a, such an insane crossover rate. So, I just need to apply that same concept to both the main and the art channel. Okay, so those are the main sections of our presentation, the plan for Q4 and 25. Now I wanna go over some of the suggestions that I got. I wrote these on little sticky notes, that way we could pretend that like you guys actually wrote it. I got a few suggestions, I only kept like the good ones. Sorry, not sorry. First one, scrapbook paper or just making art supplies. I like that one, I wanna make scrapbook paper, I do. I do. Another suggestion was integrate art content into the main channel. They said maybe have like short edited bits where I promote the art channel or do like an art challenge on the main channel. I've considered doing that, but going back to the consumerism aspect, I don't want the art business to feel like a sponsor or like an ad. Like I'll bring it up occasionally, but I don't want to like integrate it into a video. It feels too like, in your face you know like in your face and i don't want that but in terms of like art challenges those will just be one-off videos on the actual art channel you know uh a good a channel that i used to watch i think i remember his name i subscribed i unsubscribed a while ago Let me see if I can find his channel. But he would do like drawing videos and then like how to videos and then challenges. Yeah, Jazza, Jazza. I think he's Australian. But I used to watch stuff all the time. But yeah, so we'll just do our stuff just on our channel. Kind of like how on this channel, anything art related will be on this Twitch channel from now on. Another suggestion, have fun, make weird things. Okay, just throw stuff at the wall, got it? Another person said, simply just draw a duck. No narcs, but I am working on an animal series. No narcs. Another suggestion, make meme fan art. I kind of like this one. If anybody has a Twitter, check out KK Flipnote on his Twitter or his YouTube channel, he makes DS animations of like realistic animal movements, of memes. His stuff is really good. 
And then I think the cutest suggestion I got was draw fan art after you play a game on stream for the main channel. It was cute. And this is something I thought about doing. If anybody watched my Twitch channel initially when I like launched it, I one of the things I said I wanted to do was integrate art into whatever I did on stream for that gaming channel. And I did that for a little bit. We had the Mario Moon Jar. We had the Mario Kart hat with the buttons that I made. But it got to a point where like it felt forced to make art. So I stopped after like two or three games of making art for it. But I think doing a stream where like I draw some fan art is chill. I don't know if I want to do fan art just for like copyright reasons. It's always like a weird gray line. But I still think that's a really cute idea. And it's something I have thought about for a while. Okay. The final question of the survey was, was it a W or L survey? Majority of you guys said W. One person said L. And you know what I have to say to you? <laughs> okay, well, that brings us to the conclusion of the quarter four 2024 piece and art shareholders meeting. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you learned something. I hope you got some insight and have a bit more confidence in the piece and art business for this year and next year. Just to conclude, Main takeaways, for this quarter and next year, I will be investing more personal time, which will lead to more influence and then more money, I promise. The goal is to become profitable by summer 2025. The only way Peason can make money that goes into my personal bank account is if my business makes a profit. That's how payouts work. It's not like I can pay myself hourly. When you're an owner, you get, you only get profits. The, on, the only way you can be paid hourly as an owner is if you're an LLC and then you do like a separate tax filing. But for now, I can only pay myself out if I make a profit. So guys, we are down 3K. That's projected by the end of the year when I file my taxes for the annual. So invest today. Also, hi Vic. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Wait, you're... Dude, you missed the whole meeting. You're like my top investor on the main channel. What the fuck? Okay. Another thing I want to maintain is keeping true to my personal values of art and expression. So that means no prints. I'm sorry if you guys wanted it. It's not fucking happening. I'm sorry, not sorry. But the main thing is doing everything on my own as I can, making quality work that I'm proud of, and also not limiting or exacerbating my personal expression especially when i'm going to be investing more time into social media and youtube i was watching a movie if it was transformers one i'll forgive you okay next just work with new mediums and themes just keep making stuff i'm young i'm 25 i got years to make and create have fun experiment make stuff if it's bad it's bad when i die it'll be worth thousands and then finally just make good shit make stuff that i'm proud of make good shit but there we go thank you all for participating thank you to tooth for investing in peace and art today i look forward to what we can do together and also guys one last reminder, new Lido prints are available on peacenow.myshopify.com. Click the link in chat and make a purchase today. Anybody who makes an order today will get an exclusive hollow print for free. But thank you. Thank you for watching. And click subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. I appreciate you for watching. She's going to be in an art gallery one day? Yeah, when I fucking die. Everybody's art goes in value when they die. It's so sad. It's so sad. What's the command? Um, shop. Okay, guys. Uh. Uh.
What do we do now? And thank you guys for watching. What do you guys think of the stream? It was almost two hours. That was a lot of yapping. That was a lot of yapping. So key takeaways. Or the main announcements. We now have a donation link via... Oh, I don't have the link. Maybe I have the link still. Oh, there it is. Donate to the channel and you can become an investor today. New Lionel prints are available. And then finally, custom work slash commissions will be available to the public for personal commissions starting next Friday. So if you want to stay up to date on all that, make sure you're following the social media. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a TikTok, and a YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to the Peace and underscore Art YouTube channel. Just search Peace and Art on YouTube. Or if you go to my main channel, it's one of the pinned channels on the page. Yeah, those are the main things for today. What do you guys think of the stream? Be honest. If you guys watched the whole thing, I know some of you guys were lurking. Two of you were chatting the whole time. Am I going to be streaming on the other channel? To be frank, no. I've been working on this all day. I literally didn't eat lunch. I didn't shower. I fucking stink. So no, I will not be clicking go live on the main channel. I might stream tomorrow though. I, I think I need to rest today. Um, your name is Frank? No. I actually kind of fucking hate that name. Sorry. <laughs> go not be smelly. <laughs> you already click go live? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you, got, you already got a stream. Okay, be honest, be honest. What can make the shareholder stream better? I, I thought it was chill. I did fucking talk a lot. But for future quarterly meetings, because today we're, we went over everything, like all the stats. Every quarter we'll do a new survey. It'll be different questions, some repeating questions, just to see how demos change over the year. But yeah, how, I think, I think the, <laughs> I think it's funny enough on its own, you know? What did I do good? What did you like? What can I do better? You know, you guys are the shareholders. Got your suits on. Also, look at this. Sh it's kind of funny because the shadow kind of makes sense. Like right here, the green screen doesn't cut it out, but like having a shadow, I think, adds to it, you know? <laughs> 10 out of 10. Thank you, Vic. <laughs> this may or may not become an edit for the art channel. We'll see. Depends. Wait, I should go back to the the screen. Bookmark art channels return. Oh, yeah, I, I did briefly say this earlier. Anything art related will be streamed on this channel. So if I get an order, sometimes I'll paint it live. If we'll, if we're, if we're going to be recording videos for YouTube, so that can mean just regular illustration, game or drawing challenges, it will be on this channel. Um, VODs will still be up. Oh, VODs are only enabled on this channel for a week. So if you miss a VOD, it'll be on the YouTube VOD channel. And then, because like I said, I want to try and backlog content for the art YouTube channel to be two months ahead. So if we start recording in October, November, we'll be ahead. Because the ideal content lineup is one YouTube video on the main channel for stream highlights every week. And then still YouTube shorts on the Clips channel, still every other day, regular, um, horizontal videos on the clips channel and either weekly or bi-weekly videos on the art channel if it was weekly videos it would be one long form speed painting one um i think a really fun series would be one that has viewer interaction so every other month we do drawing comments and then the month in between we do drawing viewers just to get people more engaged in the comment section and then also um on socials and then third video would be drawing challenge 
I think a fun monthly challenge would be using only one medium. So like only using crayons or markers or charcoal for a drawing. And then we spin a wheel. And then the fourth video would just be an illustration speed drawing. But just me drawing something. I think that's a good content lineup. I think that's adequate. So we'll work on doing those streams and having those edits ready for January, December this year. We love a game. I know. I really want to play Skyward Sword. If I go live on the main channel tomorrow, we'll, we will be continuing Skyward Sword. So if you missed that VOD, go, go watch that first VOD. <laughs> it's actually really fucking funny. Also, for anybody curious, I am wearing sweatpants in the office. Okay. Um... Oh, shit. Dude, my bank. <laughs> Can we donate in Roblox? No. I don't know how you'd even report that on, like, your income. Wait, Vic, don't you have a business degree? Okay, anything else you guys want to tell me? Anything else? Do-do, do-do, okay well guys enough stalling thank you all for watching i promise there will be more content on this channel so make sure to have notifications on for this twitch channel if you're watching live if you're watching the vod uh click follow click subscribe if you watch this far who knows the only person with a business degree missed their meeting. That is so unprofessional. Like, what the fuck? And I don't even need it or use it. Would you ever do, like, consulting services? I watch the stream instead of doing my homework. I watch this instead of working. Guys, you can't be saying that shit in the office. We're literally in the office. <laughs> look, look, we're in the piece in office. You can't be, like, saying that you're slacking. You know, I slack when I click a live, but look, I'm here. I'm in the office. No, but how sick would it be to have, like, a piece in warehouse? Uh, maybe I do consulting? How much would you charge? I need help. You know what I've realized? Have you, okay, last thing I'll say. Has anybody seen the movie Parasite, the Korean movie that, like, won all the fucking movie awards one year? The One of the main plot points is that the mom will, like, trust people that have, like, an indirect connection to her. So she's hiring all these people and she's paying them lots of money to, like, do odd jobs. And I was thinking about it. Isn't that what, like, YouTubers do? They, like, hire their viewers to become editors and social media managers. Huh. The peace and company wants the employees to feel okay to speak their minds. I mean, this is the shareholders meeting. And Tooth does have an investor badge now. The one about the hand with an eye? No. No. Guys, buy the new artwork. <laughs> How are you, VIP? Um, anybody who donates to the new Streamlabs link gets a VIP badge because you're technically an investor in the business. Donate today! And no, we're not a charitable organization. <laughs> also, just so you guys know, on my TV, I had Hassan stream open. <laughs> I'm not listening to it. It's muted, but, like, he is Austin right now. I do love Austin. Austin show! <laughs> wow, three years of supporting your stream and no VIP badge. Yeah, I mean, you are a tier two. Should I just give VIP to my tier three subs? Should I just say fuck it? You know. Uh, what's it called when you, like, prioritize the rich? <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, guys, be honest. If I gave VIP to tier threes, would you sub at tier three? No, I'm kidding. There is literally no benefit to subbing at tier 3. It's just a flex. It's just a flex. Okay, guys. Enough yapping. Thank you all for watching. Look forward to new content for the Peace and Art channel. Like I said, 
I will try my best to do weekly uploads on the main channel. Shit! I just realized I don't have a video ready for tomorrow. Fuck! I'm hungry. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. That's gonna be two hours tonight. That's fine. I'm 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 almost done with editing the chicken nugget stream. That'll be tomorrow's video. It's an easy edit. Only an hour and a half for rock footage. Um, but yeah. Look forward to more streams on this channel. Look forward to more content on all my art social media soon. So make sure you're following. Thank you for watching. I will see the shareholders once again next quarter in January. But thank you all for watching. Genuinely, I'm happy that there are individuals who appreciate and enjoy what I do. So thank you. I will see you guys on this channel. Who knows when? I don't know. I don't know. But I will probably see you guys on the main channel. Uh, let's say tomorrow or Sunday. I kind of want to rest. I kind of want to rest. Yeah, thank you for watching. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next quarter, yes, sir? You better not be late next quarter. I'm really upset. Oops, I hit my mic. But once again, thank you, Tooth, for the donation earlier. Genuinely, thank you. But you know, also know it fucking sucks. The donation is locked. Because since it's a new account, I can't withdraw it for three fucking weeks. It's good I don't need the money. I'm fashionably late. Yeah. And you know what? I streamed later in the day for you guys. For the nine to fivers. And this is what I get. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but genuinely, thank you guys for watching. I know today was kind of silly. I did a lot of yapping. So, thank you for watching. Yeah, it's in my account, but I got an email saying you can't withdraw it for three weeks. Because you're a new account. And I was like, shit. The donos I gave to Cutie got refunded. Oh, it's because on PayPal, for Streamlabs elements, you can either choose to automatically accept the donation... Or the streamer has to manually accept donations. That's way, that way if somebody like donates $500 by accident, the streamer can just refund it on their own. But that's why. There was one time I donated cutely 100 bucks. I don't remember why. I think it's because she made something for me, but then it got refunded. So, <laughs> And she was like, you can just keep it. I was like, okay, like it. Seriously, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys had fun today. It's because she didn't verify her account. Bro, she's missing out. I don't know. I mean, Tooth, if your donation gets refunded, that, that means you lose your badge. <laughs> I'm kidding. But thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. And I'll update the command. Yeah. Oh, also, another goal for this year was to get affiliate on this channel. Because if finances are separate, then we can have separate sub revenue for this Twitch channel. So, in order for me to get affiliate, I have to average three viewers for seven streams in one calendar a month. Shit, so that means I gotta stream more. Fuck! Okay. Bye, guys!